Welcome back, 412-575-2600. That's the number on the Borders and Borders Hotline. Josh Taylor, Andrew Filipponi. He's live in the 93.7 The Fan Newsroom. Pony, we'll start out with a question on Twitter from George. He asks, do you see Miles Killebrew making the team? George thinks he will be too. will turn out to be a nice under-the-radar signing for the team in the secondary. If Miles Killebrew does make the team, Pony, I'm expecting it's because he has something to offer on special teams. That's probably going to be the way he gets in the door. Let's be honest, most of the jobs on offense and defense are pretty much spoken for. So the guys that are on the outside looking in, if they can make something happen on special teams, Mike Tomlin likes to say the more you can do, the more attractive you are. So if Miles Killebrew does make the team, I'm imagining special teams is going to be in his immediate future. But what are you thinking? Well, he comes from Detroit. That's about the extent of my Miles Killebrew. I don't think he's related to Harmon. Uh, that's about as much as I know about the guy. Uh, I do know that the Steelers' secondary to me is the one area of a very good defense that I have some major questions about, Josh. Uh, Mika Fitzpatrick, I believe, is one of the best safeties in the NFL. I'm not telling any Steeler fan something they don't already know. Right. But I think the rest of the players there, you're not just being a Steelers hater or a Steelers pessimist if you have real questions about each other's, each starter. Even Joe Hayden, because of his advanced age for a corner thir- in his 30s now, uh, the Steelers, I think, are right to not give him a contract extension uh, right now. Uh, you got James Pierre, who has wowed, I guess, in training camp and has earned that job based on practices. Uh, but he's still never done it in a game, and he is undrafted after all. And Cam Sutton, you know, somebody that, you know, Steelers media seems to love this guy. And I do think in flashes, he's done a pretty good job. But there's a reason, in my opinion, why he was the fourth corner on their depth chart last year. They thought all of last year that Steven Nelson was better. And they thought that, for the most part, Mike Hilton was a better slot corner so I'm hoping that Cam Sutton now in a bigger role will excel but I don't think that that's a given I like the front seven a lot I think they've got really good depth now at outside linebacker I hope this two it thing works itself out but if there's one area of the defense where I think you really have to keep your fingers crossed is in the secondary Josh and it's a tough season to have secondary problems because if you look at the Steelers schedule unless there are injuries they play some really really good quarterbacks I think that NFL top 100 list that's coming out, there's four quarterback. There's four quarterbacks in the top 10, and the Steelers are going to play three of them. Yeah, and the first one they play likes to go with four receivers, so that's going to be a really big test right off the bat. you got to face Josh Allen. He likes to go four receivers. Good luck with that one. I totally agree with that. The corner depth especially is the thing that wor- worries me the most. Not even right now on paper, but let's say Cam Sutton or Joe Hayden goes down and gets injured, kind of like uh, when Joe Hayden tested positive for COVID at the end of last season. If you lose one of those guys, then what happens? After that, it seems like it's another leak that you just can't plug. But let's keep it moving. We got Mike in Oakland on the line. Mike, you're on the nightly sports call. Hi, there I am. How you guys doing? Josh, how are you doing, my friend? I'm good, Mike. You caught me on a Thursday. You caught me off guard. How you been? Well, because Friday there's no show, and you know what I said? I just I haven't talked to you in a couple weeks, so uh, I had to want to get off my chest my feelings on the Pirates. And I'll, I'll be here be Saturday, very... too, Mike. I'll be here Saturday. You are. You are. That's my usual day, but I figured I'd call you early today. But Fair listen, enough. here's my Pirates thoughts, and I want to get Pony and your take, and I'll try to be quick. First of all, the thing with Polanco, yes, he had a good game tonight. Congratulations. I remember he made a leaping catch a month ago or something, and then he went like, oh, for his next 20. I mean, he'll have one good game a month. But the fact is, what he said today in the interview that, you know, he's trying, give him a break. There was only 5,000 fans there, and he could hear them saying DFA. Well, you know what? You need to perform. I mean, there's no one's going to have sympathy when you're making $11 million a year and you have a below uh, negative war, you're hitting 200. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, that, that kind of uh, pr- production deserves to be booed. And I, I just didn't have any sympathy for that, those kind of comments. The other thing I want to mention is Mitch Keller. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, we won tonight, but another atrocious performance by him. He gave up seven earned runs in five innings, only two strikeouts. His ERA is close to seven. I I, I mean, I don't think he's gotten at all better from where he was last year. In fact, you could argue he's gotten worse. And I don't know what to do with this guy. Is he going to be part of the, the roster again next year, the rotation? And what do you do moving forward? And the last thing is, does does Tsutsugo remind you a little bit of Jung Ho Gung? I mean, we're so devoid of power in this in this in this in this organization from top to bottom. You're just kind of hoping that maybe uh, this guy maybe found some power with us and could provide what Jung Ho Gung did a 
couple years before he got hurt. Anyway, take care, guys. Uh, Josh, we'll talk soon, my friend. Always a pleasure. Mike always comes with bullet points, and he promises he'll be quick. But, you know, we, we don't yeah. send the mind too much. He broke down a lot. Um, as far as Gregory yeah. Polanco is concerned, I'll say one thing. To whom much is given, much is expected. Um, with Mitch Keller, the thing that sticks out the most to me, Pony, he'll have a good start. They don't have a really bad start. They don't have a good start. They don't have a terrible start. It just seems like it's back and forth with him. Uh, as far as Sutu goes concerned, when his name was mentioned, the light bulb went off in my head as far as having a left-handed power bat. I kind of agree with Mike on this one. Not even just having a power bat, but a left-handed power bat that can take advantage of PNC Park. We haven't seen many yeah. of them this organization. You probably need to see more. Well, one example of a guy that they kind of found out of nowhere that did that for a few years was Garrett Jones, who was yep. you know, cast away by the Minnesota Twins organization and for two or three years was actually a pretty good power hitter. But you know, the thing about Polanco that I want to say that is, to me, one of my biggest pet peeves, and I hate it when athletes say it and remind us of it because they're the last people, in my opinion, professional athletes I'm talking about, who should be saying these kind of things. In my opinion, a professional athlete should never compliment himself on his effort. Because when you're making millions of dollars, it is a given that you put forth 100% effort. That should be the bare minimum. Any athlete that pats himself on the back because he tries hard, professional athlete, you want to talk about, you know, you want to set an example for the little leaguers that are playing at Williamsport right now, you know, high school football's just starting up. Those kind of kids... Yeah, you congratulate them when they give effort. You don't do that for professional athletes. I'm sorry, whether it's Polanco giving himself credit or Derek Shelton, his manager, that's a joke to me because that's what you should expect from every professional athlete. Anyone who's, yes, gifted enough to get to that point, but also lucky enough to be there, should not be giving himself praise for doing what every person who gets paid millions of dollars should do, and that's try at their job every day. There's far more people that give a lot, a lot of effort to do a lot of things and don't make as much money, but to keep doing it every day. Right. To your point, it, it's definitely worth, you know, it's worth dissecting from that point. It's one thing to talk about the performance and say, okay, the performance is not there. But then to say, oh, well, the performance is not there, but the effort is. I mean, you'd like to hope that the effort was there because if the effort wasn't there, you wouldn't have the performance. In the meantime, it is time for our Tri-State Office Furniture Tweet of the Night. It's not baseball related. It's actually football related, but... It is from Pro Football Talk. Stefan Wisniewski announces his retirement, was a Steeler for a brief bit last season, but a Central Catholic alumnus, played at Penn State, carved himself out a nice career in the National Football League, won a couple Super Bowl rings, and then Stefan Wisniewski decides this season to retire from the NFL. Congratulations to him on a great career. We'll be right back.